Okay. Uh, so the first thing I want to cover today is something that you can actually find on the Arnold documentation. It's adding wear and tear with the curvature shader. Um, so it's a relatively simple node set work, uh, node setup uh, in the hypershade, and it gives you this really nice effect of having some edge wear uh, on your models. So the tutorial, or, or there is information how to do this on the Arnold documentation. Um, it's not really a step by step. I mean, there are there's opportunity to run into some, some issues. So I wanted to actually uh, go through this on a video instead of just sending you this link. Uh, if you are interested in in this effect, I think it can add some really nice levels of of detail and kind of character to a piece with relatively minimal uh, effort. I will note that this tutorial uses the layer shader. Uh, I'm going to use the Arnold Mix Shader. I have better results with that, so that's what I'm going to use. And um, here is, this is a model that is actually also available on it's either the Maya or the Arnold documentation website as kind of a demo file. But I use this effect on, on this toy robot to kind of get the sense of paint being worn off um, of the edges and showing the metal underneath. So. I've given you all a start file that looks like this. It's just a simple object I modeled that would have some nice clean edges that we could apply this effect to and, and see the result in a pretty straightforward way. Uh, if we look through the file, there's a, there is a simple light setup. Uh, the object by default just has this orange uh, material. I believe it's, yeah, just this orange paint surface. Um, and there's not really anything else in the scene. Three lights, a basic backdrop, and this object. If I open up the Hypershade, which is where we'll be doing most of our work here, uh, you can see we've got two materials. We have, I'll expand this out so we can see this, at that's Arnold. We have a metallic surface, and we have this uh, paint uh, material. I'm going to turn down the specular on that. We can just make this a, oh, I've, I've also got, what do I have? I have a coat on, I'm gonna turn that off. And we can turn that specular back up, so it's, there we go, that'll work. So it's, it's, just, it's a matte paint material, and then we have a metallic material. So just making sure that I've got some contrast here so that the effect is obvious. Um, like I said, we're gonna do this with a mix shader, which we haven't really dealt with. Uh, or worked with before, and we can do this almost entirely in the Hypershade uh, editor. So, uh, the first thing we need to do is, is create the mix shader. So I'm going to right click on the object, assign a new material, and in the Arnold shader section I'm going to choose AI mix shader. Okay, I click on that, and in the Hypershade, this is what I get. I get my normal property editor. Uh, I'm going to leave out the default name just because this is only, there's only three shaders in the scene and mix shader is, is descriptive enough for our purposes here. And you see the mix shader doesn't have a whole lot of options. Uh, there's the type, there's a mixing mode, a mixing weight, and then a slot, two slots for shaders. So the first thing we need to do is tell it what two shaders to mix. So I'm going to middle click and drag the paint surface onto shader one. Okay, in a second this thumbnail will update. And then I'm gonna middle click and drag uh, metal surface onto shader two. Okay. So I was having some little bit of issues with this. You see it just takes a while to update. Um, so you might have to be a little bit patient to get that to, uh, to update and to see the results. But we can look here and we can kind of see on this shader ball test what it's doing right now is just kind of evenly mixing them uh, and we have this mix weight so if we move this all the way to the left it's going to show whatever shader one is which in, in this case is this orange paint if I move it all the way to the right it's going to show what this metal surface is or the, the second shader which is the metal surface and then in the middle is an even 50 50 blend uh, and you can obviously drag it to any any value in between but you can also, 
You can see it's got a texture slot, so you can use a texture to drive this mix. Um, I haven't really talked about layered shaders or mix shaders at all, so just a quick overview um, or, or just kind of some of the other options you have. If you just plug in, let's say, a checker pattern texture, you can see the result that you get with a checker pattern texture um, driving the mix. So we don't, we don't want that. We want to just worry about kind of the edge detail. So I'm going to graph my mix shader network. You can see this is the network that I have. Uh, and I'm going to select my mix shader node and then where it, I plugged in my checker pattern I'm gonna right click and break the connection that's gonna get rid of that checker pattern okay so now we can I can regraph that just to get rid of to clean it up a little bit now we can actually do the what we need to to do for the edge detail so the the effect runs off of the curvature node which we haven't talked about uh, but I'm going to, under Mix Weight, I'm going to click on that Texture uh, button again. About not actually seeing the two shaders uh, when you graph the network. Um, and that's because there aren't any shaders in here. And I'm sure you did actually go through and middle click and drag. But again, sometimes it doesn't update right away. And I don't know if it's just a bug in Maya or what's going on. But sometimes you have to redo it and just wait a moment, um, let it update, and then you can drag the next one on. Um, that way then when you click away and then click back, they should still be there. Uh, also sometimes if this doesn't update, like once you drag the first one in, you can just click on the next box and click back and sometimes that forces the update uh, if these shaders aren't sticking. All right, so once we have those in place, we're going to click on uh, our texture icon for the mix weight value. And we want to add a, it's in the Arnold section, Texture, AI Curvature is what we're looking for. I'm going to click on that. Don't worry about the Connection Editor. Okay, so now we have the AI Mix Shader and this Curvature. And we need to connect it. Um, we probably should have done this in the Connection Editor. But uh, we need to connect the Out Color to the mix, but you'll see that we've got a red dot there and a green dot there, and if I try to click and drag, it doesn't connect. Okay, so the attribute cannot be connected. Uh, all we need to do is open up this out color value, this little plus icon. I'll zoom in here so you can see it, this little plus. Click on that, and it gives us the RGB values, and we can just drag the red into the mix node. Okay, so now that's connected. What we have is this curvature node that is controlling how these two shaders are being mixed. And I can regraph the network and you can kind of see it laid out a little bit more. Um, if this is getting a little unwieldy, you can click on this little, I guess you'd call it like a, this is not the hamburger. hamburger. You'd call it the hamburger, there we go. And you can, depending on how many times you click on it, you can change what you see. So you can see like just what is connected or super minimized, whatever you need to kind of clean up your view. Uh, and then we can regraph the network, and now it's a little bit easier to see. Um, but I want to focus just on the curvature node, and we can kind of see how this is going to work, and then we're going to add a noise um, texture to this to make the, the effect a little bit more random. Um, so I've got the, the curvature node selected. I'm going to open up my render view. Okay. Uh, now is also a good time to save because I had this crash on me a few times. Um, so it doesn't hurt to, to save your progress. And I want to, there's a new, well, not a new thing, but a new to you uh, button in the render view. And it's this one right here isolate selected. And what this is going to do is it's only going to render the node that you have selected. So I'm going to click that, everything's going to go black. And then in my hypershade, Again, I need to try to deal with my limited screen space here. Uh, in the Hypershade, if I select a node, let's say I select Metal Surface. Make sure I have my object selected. Got my Metal Surface, and it's not actually not actually working the way it's supposed to. Hold on. Forgot something. Um, I, I don't think I assigned the actual shader. 
right click, assign existing material, mix shader. I thought I had done that, but apparently not. So once I do that, with this isolate selected button toggled, whatever node I click on in the hypershade, that's what it's going to render. So here's just the paint, here's the metal surface, here's the mix, which right now it looks pretty standard, and then here's the curvature. And the curvature, we need to bump the radius up a little bit. Uh, and now we can start to see what it's doing. Um, and remember, this, this is controlling the mix weight, and it's 0 to 1. Um, so 0 would be like black, and 1 would be white. And so anything that is black is going to get the, uh, sorry, let me disconnect this real quick and I can remember because I always get this backwards. Uh, anything that is zero is going to get, or black is going to get orange, uh, this, this first shader, and anything that is white on the texture is gets a weight of one, so that's going to be the metallic surface. So I can reconnect my curvature node. I'll click on that and we can kind of see how that's going to play out can do is start adjusting the values in the curvature node to kind of isolate the parts that we want to get the metallic texture versus the paint texture. Uh, so we'll start with the spread. We can kind of, as we bring that down, we can see it's, it's really just hugging the edges. And then the spread in conjunction with the threshold. See now it's kind of tighter, harder lines. And then we have bias, which kind of dulls or intensifies that. And same thing with multiply. Okay, so let's maybe we start. I don't want to do too much on the multiply. I'm just going to leave that at one. Go something like that. This is this is easy to see because we have this isolate selected on. Um, now I can click on my mix shader, and we can preview the result of that. Okay, so now you can see these edges are much more, uh, are metallic, basically. I can also turn off Isolate Selected if I want. And we can go back to the curvature, and we can kind of adjust the, the effect live. So maybe we want to increase the spread. Okay. Um, maybe we the threshold down and now it's even more worn. Okay, so that in and of itself is a pretty good effect, but it's very even. Uh, and we let's let's try to make it a little bit more um, random. I'm also going to go back here and just bring my values back to where they were. Something like that. Okay, uh, so now what we can do is if we adjust this if we plug a, a noise texture into the radius value, so I'm going to click on texture slot there and create a Arnold texture noise. Okay, close that. And the same thing, I'm just going to drag the out color into the radius. Okay. And I'll, I'll zoom in here so you can actually see it on, on the YouTube. Okay, so that's that's the setup there. So go back to Isolate Selected here. And I'm just going to click on the noise. I'm actually going to, I'm going to close my render view and reopen it. Okay, so here's, this is the value of Isolate Selected. So I can just modify the value of my noise and, and get that to a place where that's going to have an effect. So right now it's a very subtle noise texture and it's really just some some slight gradients um, but I can up the octaves so now we're getting some more detail there and then we can maybe decrease the oh, leave that look at nerdy that's fine really what we need to do is bring the scale down so this scale um, it's like UVs where you the higher the number the the smaller it is so I'm going to go with, well, like 50 each direction. Oops, 50, 50, 50. Okay, so now we've got this really fine noise. Um, and then we can adjust these a little bit more. Maybe something like that. Um, we can also close the Arnold render view and just look at the 
preview here in the Hypershade, which should be updating eventually, maybe. Maybe it'll update. Or maybe it won't update. Why, w why would it? Why would it do the thing it's supposed to do? Hypershade, relaunch it, and now it's updating here. Uh, and you can see the effect that we're getting is we're getting these nice, lovely, worn edges. Um, and the, the, the majority of the paint is still staying. So I'm going to hit render again. We'll turn off the isolate selected. And we can kind of see what this looks like. And this is uh, kind of minimal wear and tear. But we, what we can do is, if we want it to be more worn, then we just can go back to the curvature node. And we can change the spread from 0.8. We can bring that up. Maybe we bring the threshold down. OK, and now it's, you know, we're losing even more paint. You can see the render time isn't great. Um, so it will it will definitely increase render time, but it's a it's a pretty great pretty easy way to get this effect without having to um, manually paint this in Photoshop. It's a nice procedurally generated effect that gives a lot of, gives more character to your scene.